Would you give a warm welcome to Can Candace Gregory, the President and CEO of the Open Door Mission? Candace, God bless you. Well, I just want to say good morning, Covenant. If you're tuning in, uh, whether it be by radio or by Facebook Live, we are keeping a moose length distance here in the in this congregation, and uh, we are practicing social distance. You know, I wish I could show you my Norman Rockwell moment picture, but you're going to have to kind of use your imagination. Um, I have a fabulous supportive husband that allows me to be in full-time ministry with our family and I have four beautiful children that God has blessed us with and actually uh, all of them have grown up at the mission and we uh, yesterday you may have seen us in the news on channel three six and seven we empowered 4,500 who have food secure insecurity issues in our community to be able to eat this coming week through a drive through you know, God did not call me to a foreign country. He called me to the inner city of Omaha and southwest Iowa. And I am so blessed that we have prayer partners, that we have uh, financial supporters. We have active volunteers that are from Covenant Presbyterian Church. I have a lot of great memories of coming to Covenant as a young leader. I actually followed Pastor Bob here in the 1990s. Uh, he came and spoke here regularly. Um, and I got to just be a tag along and learn and uh, be uh, molded and shaped by him as a leader. And then later on, my children got to learn from Pastor Dan in the mornings. He is known in, in our church as the pastor that wears Converse sneakers. And so you can't see them, but I got close to those on, Pastor Dan, this morning. You know, I know that many of you are expecting me to speak about COVID-19, and I'm going to, in a way, in fact, this is my second message I prepared for you this morning, uh, when Pastor Kevin contacted me months ago asking if I would consider coming, I thought this is awesome. I mean, the missions fair is always around Easter. This is wonderful. Christmas is the promise, but Easter is the proof. This, and I was so excited. I, I spent a lot of time in First Peter 2, uh, 24. He himself who bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness because by his wounds, you have been healed. The proof of Easter is the foundation of our faith. But in the uncharted waters of our times, I have changed my message this morning, and I know everyone does want to know about the impact that COVID-19 is having at Open Door Mission. And we're going to have a Q&A at the end of the message today, and we'll be able to answer maybe some of your questions and share. Um, and if we don't get to all of them, please post on our Open Door Mission Facebook Live, and we will get to them this afternoon if you have a pressing question. But in the meantime, I want you to join us in our message this morning by getting your Bible, if you haven't already, getting a piece of paper, a pen, also grabbing that cup of coffee, and hunkering in with us for the next 45 minutes. You see, I want to start in Mark chapter 4. So that's in the New Testament. So just crack open your Bible to the middle and go over a little bit to the right, and you'll find it. You see, a lot of times people forget that our message and our blueprint, blueprint to life is right here, and we forgot to open it. So if you'll join me this morning, I want to talk about trusting in Jesus in the face of a storm. I don't know about you, but this is definitely a storm in our life. And at the Open Door Mission, we are trying to be calm. We are trying to bring peace we are trying to bring up a, a, a therapeutic, safe environment to those that come through our doors. So what better way than to talk about trusting in Jesus in the face of a storm, but to look at Mark 4. You see, right before this, this is a parable, by the way, and that was happening before this. And, and in Mark, we had the sower, the lamp, the mustard seed. And, and a parable is a short story that makes a comparison to emphasize a truth. But we're going to just leave those parables for a few moments and jump over to Mark. And if you go down to the small numbers, we're going to start in verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, he is Jesus, 
Let us go over to the other side. I just want to say to you, if Jesus, a people person, is saying, let's go, he's tired, right? He is tired. I can truly relate to this. He said, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. If Jesus himself decided that he was tired and he was needing to get away from the crowd, I assume in many days in modern language, he was exhausted. This I'm sharing with you. Uh, I have not been outside the mission walls or my home walls for two and a half weeks. We're working 14, 16 hour days. We are exhausted. I can relate to this, that he got in the boat to get away, to have a time out, to take a break. When you go down, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern. Just so you know, I am from, as Pastor Kevin said, from Canada. I'm very familiar with boats, sailboats, motorboats, kayaks, you name it, we got them. And uh, stern is a great place to take a break. It really is. You get away from, it's the back of the boat, not the bow where, you know, you hit every wave. Kaboom kabump and the waves come up over the bow and they get you wet sleeping on a cushion the disciples woke him and said to him teacher don't you care if we drowned he got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still then the wind died down and it was completely calm you know many times i've said to others uh this very word quiet be still i have four of them in my home and, and I don't know about you, but sometimes we are not on the same page. We are not on the same page in the same book. We are not connecting. And I've said it many times, be quiet and be still, and it does not happen. But in this case, then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I'm here to tell you that we don't have time. That's a whole different message. No, that this truly, I I mean, we're just talking about one little passage here, but that's a whole different message that we don't have time for today. But then he says, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be with my friends, to be with my loved ones, to be with family. And I am so grateful for the words that you've pressed upon my heart to share May everything I say and do bring glory to you and point someone in the direction of you in their lives. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As I said, there's many different messages you could go off of this very short message. One of them is where Jesus does say no faith. The other is the great question, if Jesus has the power to calm the wind and the sea, Why does he even allow it to happen in the first place? That's a whole nother message. Pastor Tim will have to do that one for you. But if you're, if you are sitting at home today and you're wondering why, why me? Why not me? Why, why, why? Not only look to God's word, but there's a very, very short pocketbook that you can get very minimal cost. It's uh, Anne Graham Lott's book called Why. If you can't afford that, would you please write in the comments, Candace, I need that. I'll, con- I'll contact you personally, and I will put one in the mail for you tomorrow. Not today, tomorrow. But Anne Graham Lotz wrote a great book, Why? And if you are struggling today with all the things that are going on in the world today, I would love to not only put a Bible in your hand, but also Anne Graham Lotz, Why? So just write in the comments in Facebook or contact me at 402-422-1111, and I'll make sure that those come in the mail to you. Well, as I mentioned, Jesus was exhausted. He, he went to the stern where it's less noisy, less action, less, and he was seeking rest and sleep. You know, uh, have you flown lately? You may not have, but I did about three weeks ago and I was coming back from DC. I got out just in time truly. And I was flying back. And, and sometimes when you're flying from the, the central part or the eastern part, uh, I don't know if you've had this experience. I, I really do not like roller coasters. 
I, I, you, I don't. That's it. The bottom line. I'm letting you in, just being totally vulnerable and transparent with you. I don't like roller coasters. Don't do them. And um, I don't also like turbulence. You know when you're just flying along and everything's great, you're answering a million emails because you've got Wi-Fi on the phone now, on the plane, and you're just, just booking along, and all of a sudden, the captain comes on and says, buckle your seatbelt, make sure it's tight. We're going to have a little turbulence. I don't think they should say the word little because they never mean it. It's always a lot. And I'm telling you, that's the way I vision that the boat was in the sea, that, that they didn't have any little turbulence. They had a lot. Why else would they have gone and woken up the master who they know themselves was exhausted and tired? I think this message shows us something so much more powerful uh, than anything else, and it shows us that God reveals his faithfulness and his power. He is faithful and he is powerful. And let me share with you that it's not the first time it's not the first time. The list is so long. Noah and the flood in Genesis 6. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel 3. And, and in Daniel 6, Daniel in the lion's den, locking the jaws of a lion. Wow. Powerful, powerful. I don't know about you, but in these times of tribulation and trials and unknown certainty, the only thing that I know that is certain is God and his power. In fact, where do you find your courage today? Amongst this COVID-19 coronavirus, where do you find your courage? I, I don't know about you, but for me, I cannot find it within myself. It's, I'm only human, just like you. And, and I can't humanly pull up enough strength or wisdom to do this. And thank God we have wonderful advisors in the CDC and in WHO and, yes, in Douglas County Health and our Department of Health and Human Services, but we even have a bigger and better and powerful advisor. Can I hear an Amen. We do, and that is God himself. The place that we can find courage and wisdom is in God alone. Anchor your heart in God. You see, uh, back in, uh, in my days of Bible college in Kingswood University, I took a Psalms class. It was one of my favorite classes. Hebrew poetry is full of encouragement. And, and, and I can't share with you enough uh, that in Isaiah, we don't have time, but Isaiah 53, write this down. Look, you're not probably going out anywhere later, and you may take a Wesleyan hour. Hour, which we call in, in my home, um, it's going to be much longer than a Wesleyan hour today. It's going to be a, a few hours. But if you have time, look up Isaiah 53, because the suffering and the triumph of Jesus Christ is so powerful. You can't miss it. But in, in Psalms, chapters 131, put your hope in the Lord. Then you will have confidence in Christ. And when you have confidence in Christ, the Holy Spirit is in you and he gives you the power to put one foot in front of another, one step. And it's like that every day for me at the Open Door Mission. 26 years, every day, he gives me the strength, the power, the wisdom to do it day after day after day. The problem, as I mentioned, is that we seldom open the blueprint to our life, and that's the Bible. We rely on Sunday mornings and maybe a prayer here or there. And maybe we might make it to a Wednesday night Bible study. And if anything COVID-19 has done, it has freed up a lot of time to spend in God's word because we got nowhere to go. So I'm challenging you this week to not Netflix splurge. And just, I'm challenging you to spend 15 minutes in God's word and start in the parables because they're fun. They're fun. And one thing I can share with you in 1 John 5, 13, it says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And we can have confidence in Christ because our salvation, when we confess our sins and we believe in him, our salvation is guaranteed 
by the Holy Spirit. And that's a guarantee, a lifetime warranty. Aren't you glad you have it? A lifetime warranty. And we didn't even have to buy it. We didn't have to pay it. And so look at Ephesians first, Ephesians in chapter 1, 13 and 14. Just a few. Don't take my word for it. Whatever, what I'm saying today, don't take my word for it. Go back and check it out for yourself. Because you shouldn't be going by what Candace says. You should be going by what God's word says. One other thing I want to share with you in these turbulent times is that you can have confidence in Christ because Mine and your salvation is grounded in grace, not works. Yeah, if you believe and you've confessed those sins and you've asked him to forgive you, then you can have the confidence that you, everything, your, every being, every part of you is because God's grace. You know, a, a good track that we use at the Open Door Mission is written by a good friend, Dr. Elmer Murdoch, and it's Step Up to Life. And oftentimes people come through the doors of the Open Door Mission and they are looking for physical substance, but they are also looking for something else and it's spiritual substance. And that's what draws them to the Open Door Mission. And oftentimes in our friendship, I ask someone, if you died be- and today and you were standing before God, why do you think he'd let you enter the kingdom of heaven? And 99% of the time, people say one word to me. And it's that, oh, Candace, I'm a good person. And I'm here to share with you that I am so glad that that is not the, the criteria to enter the kingdom of heaven. Aren't you? Because if it was, we'd be going by the Ten Commandments. And I don't know about you, but I break them. And I'm, that's why I'm so glad about grace. You see, at the Open Door Mission, our faith has really changed us. Our culture is to be Jesus so people can see Jesus and ultimately they would want to know Jesus. Ah, yeah, that's what we do and why we do. And that's what we want for you. If you're listening by radio or by Facebook, we want you to know Jesus. Because in John 3, 16, he says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you have the salvation of Jesus Christ, then you can do anything. Anything. Even COVID-19. Yeah, you can do it. Has my, has, has my faith changed me? You betcha, baby. It surely has. When grace is in you and you know it's a gift, like 2 Corinthians 9.13 says, you don't celebrate your goodness. You celebrate the greatness of Jesus every day. And it may be COVID-19, but guess what? We had one man come to Christ this week in chapel. We had five men finish their baptism class, and they may be homeless, but they're not hopeless. They were baptized this week. And we had a little boy in kids club and we, t- we had the story about the, the lost sheep and it was quite a revelation to him that he meant something. This young homeless boy that he was important to God. And now mind you, he also in- he informed me that he didn't have to wash his hands either every 30 minutes because he had a bath last night. So let me share with you that for many of us, we recognize that we are saved by grace, and you can too. Fear in the world today with COVID-19 is one thing, but God will move in our behalf when we um, allow him to. When we allow him to. Second Timothy, I leave this with you. Second Timothy 1.17 says, For the Spirit of God gave us, this is so powerful. Second Timothy 1 7, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but he gives us the power of love, self-discipline. Yeah, power, love, self-discipline. And first John 4 18 says that the perfect love of Christ does not, the perfect love of Christ drives out fear. If you are fearful today, turn to God's word and you can drive out fear. I want to share with you that I don't know what God has planned for you, but he has plans for you to prosper, even even through this. God found Gideon in a hole. He found Joseph in the prison. He found Daniel in the lion's den. 
Where the world sees failure, God sees a future and an opportunity. So the next time you're feeling fearful or you're feeling unqualified or you think you can't do what God's called you to do, remember this. He tends to, re- he tends to recruit people like you and me from the pit of life and not the pedestal. So be willing, be willing to use by God this week, even through social distancing and COVID-19 as we keep a moose length.